On March 5, Ichao Peakji, the co-founder of Manus AI, posts a video with the title Introducing Manus, the first general AI agent. And the first reactions seem to be quite normal. But as soon as they started to give access to the people using Invite, the whole AI space went crazy, with people sharing videos of how they created entire games using Manus or created 100 pages detailed financial research documents. So, what is Manus? According to some, it is like deep research plus operator plus cloud computer use. But in reality, its agents having control over a sandboxed, Ubuntu-based Linux environment. Basically, agents having access to a complete operating system. So it can make and edit files like Cursor or Devin, search the web like OpenAI's operator, and with the help of these, do very deep research. But how deep? On Gaia, a benchmark released by Meta for general AI assistance, it beats OpenAI's deep research, the previous state of the art. And according to Peak, the guy we talked about in the intro, this is an early checkpoint of Manus AI. So, when can we use it? Sadly, it's behind an invite-only access. But users who have had access can share their use cases so that people can watch and interact. Let's have a look at some of them. As you guys can see, this is the interface. And on the right side is a section where you can see what Manus is doing, called Manus Computer. And on the left is the chat area where you see the prompt. The prompt is, design a 14 by 16 room with a calm and pop culture vibe including workspace and bed under a $15,000 budget. You see, Manus starts doing its work. First, it makes directories to work with. And just like Devin from Cognition AI, it makes a to-do file and mentions all points it has to work on and regularly updates it as it moves ahead. After creating the to-do file, it starts browsing, like searching the top bedroom furnitures and things like that. And it searches a lot of website and it does that for each different things, like workspace furnitures and more. And having done that, it says that I've completed your 14 by 16 design and within the budget and these are the files. If I open up one of the files, you can see the furniture with its price and dimensions all listed and formatted beautifully. Absolutely awesome. Now the user asks, give me a graphical representation of the final design. And you see, it goes and makes new files, comes up with a floor map and 3D representation of the room with various furnitures. And all of these according to the dimensions it finalized previously. Then the user asks to generate a 3D layout of the room. So as said, Manus goes and makes the 3D visualization and shares the images as you guys can see. Then he asks to make it a permanent site, basically deploy it on web. So whenever Manus is asked to deploy something, it prompts the user to accept it. And once deployed, you can view it. So let's have a look. As you guys can see, this is the interface. This was all designed according to the dimensions. Maybe that dustbin seems to go inside the wardrobe, but that's okay. Other than that, you can see we are able to see alternate views as well. I mean, an agent is able to do all this by itself. That's absolutely incredible. In this next use case, you can see a user shares a complete podcast on Deep Sea Carbon and asks to cut it into a two minute highlight reel with key quotes. So Manus starts working, it installs necessary libraries, it transcribes the audio and after having done some of the work, it reports back to the user and says that it has found some interesting segments and it looks like the podcast discusses about Deep Sea Carbon's AI capabilities, self-awareness and more. And then it gets back to working, transcribing the podcast, extracting segments. If you click the files, you can see the actual Python code it wrote and executed. And then at the end, you see it shares the transcript of what key quotes it used and also shares the two minute audio file. This next one is interesting. The user says, I am a middle school physics teacher preparing to teach law of conservation of momentum. Can you create accurate demonstration animations? So you see Manus getting into work as usual, starting with making directories and following up with a to-do list. If we have a close look, you can see it's divided into phases like research phase, design phase, development phase, presentation structure, testing and finalization and final delivery to the user. So it does all of this as we saw before and then shares the link to view the animations. Let's have a look. So you can see this is the interface. It shows various types of collisions like basic, elastic, inelastic, explosion and real world examples. Have a look at this billiards board and rocket propulsion. Let's try it out. So you can see this animation, all of this was generated by Manus AI. So did you like the demos? Yeah, even I loved it. But it's not all sunshine and roses because on March 10, GN on X shares a video where he says on sending this command while using Manus, he found out that 
Manus is nothing but Cloud Sonnet with 29 tools and with browser use, an open source GitHub repo which provides simple way for AI to access browsers. To this peak, the co-founder of Manus AI replies with a long post mentioning things like it's actually a multi-agent implementation. And when we communicate with Manus, we interact with only the executor agent which doesn't know about the knowledge, planner and other agents. Okay, so that gives us some insight on the agentic framework working behind Manus. And he also admits that they have indeed used browser use. He says that he has been using open source and also has personally open sourced some of the post train models. So which models is he talking about? We'll be talking about that later in this video. So talking about the post, when a user directly asked whether the base model was Claude or not, then he admits that indeed they were using Claude 3.5 Sonnet version 1 and some fine tuned Quinn models. And they are trying what they can do with Claude 3.7 Sonnet. And with him having confirmed the rumors, everyone went like, okay. That's just another wrapper and not a new model, including the folks behind browser use who posted memes like these. Personally, I don't understand what's bad in it. I mean, you tell me, what would have been better to know that it's a new model and the price tag to use it will be $200 or $500 or the fact that it uses existing, actually older models and can be implemented in a cheaper subscription. And startup like these will put pressure on big AI labs like OpenAI to reduce their pricing, just like they released their operator and other agentic functions in the API recently. So talking about the models, did they only use Claude 3.5 Sonnet and nothing else? In the same post when he was asked again that whether they actually used fine-tuned models, Peak shares that some of the planning of Manus has been with the help of a model they released in October. And the model is Tana 32B Preview. So to get more insight, I went into the Hugging Face page and I got a blog post that Peak wrote about this model. And this blog post was about trying to understand and replicate how Owen was able to reason. He discusses various types of reasoning paths, Stainer being one of them. In the blog post, he said that the model he trained did not respond very good to inference time scaling, which means when trying to make the model think more, performance didn't improve, but in fact, it led to a decline in benchmarks. But as we know, they eventually have been able to get good results. They have got everything together and using existing models like Claude 3.5 on it, they have given us something that I would call is close to EGI. What are your thoughts about this? The comment section is open. Do share your thoughts and I'll catch you guys in the next one.